Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Scottco. I'm joined by my colleague, Sue Levine, and we are both very grateful for the World Down Syndrome Congress in Dubai and inviting us to present to you today about all that we've learned about brothers and siblings and sisters and all their questions they have for parents. I am a medical geneticist and the director of the Down Syndrome Program at Massachusetts General Hospital. But for the purpose of this talk, I am a brother and I have an adult sister with Down Syndrome. And I am Sue Levine and my career path is a social worker and I work with brothers and sisters of children with Down syndrome as well as other disabilities as a small at a small private nonprofit organization in New Jersey, United States. We know that sibling relationships are among the most intense relationships that any of us will have growing up. They last the longest, unlike our our spouses or our significant others who might occur at midpoint in our lives, our siblings are there from the beginning and we don't get to choose them. They are with us for this journey and they certainly shape who we are. They teach us skills about how to share social skills. They teach us about competition, coping and problem solving skills. Those little opportunities that we have to wrestle with these emotions growing up sometimes shape us and give us the skills to be able to cope and wrestle with those same emotions when we're adults. Different things affect how we relate to brothers and sisters. The families of that are small in size with two children compared to families, say, with eight children, have very different relationships. If there are fewer children within the family, there is a more intensity in their sibling relationships and more chance that there will be both, both positive and negative uh, discussions happening between the two of them. If you have a larger size family, then you may have a better relationship with some siblings than in others. Birth order also makes a difference if you are the oldest in the family versus the youngest in the family. If your sister or brother with Down syndrome is older than you and you are younger, there will come a time when you realize that you are more capable than your older sibling, and that will be a cause for a bit of an adjustment as a child. If you are um, the oldest in the family yourself, then you may have more of a tendency to take care of and be protective of younger siblings. So different things uh, will affect the family dynamic. The age difference between you and your or a sibling with Down syndrome, if you are closer in age, there is more chance there will be shared play opportunities, shared opportunities for fighting over the same toys, et cetera. Whereas if there is a larger difference in your ages, there may be less interaction of that nature. Uh, gender association, there are different experiences with brothers versus sisters or brother-sister dynamics that affect uh, how people get along within the family. Sue and I took a look at the research to say, what does it show about siblings who have brothers and sisters with Down syndrome? And a lot of research comes from Australia. This is one particular study that showed that those brothers and sisters who have siblings with Down syndrome are rated as being more kind and less prone to conflict in comparison to other brothers and sisters who do not have siblings with Down syndrome. We're also as siblings less prone to behavioral problems, not that we're exempt from behavioral problems, but somehow we learn patience and we learn how to recognize that everyone has challenges in this life journey. And brothers and sisters are more likely to have increased levels of empathy and more likely to go into caregiving responsibilities. So the research definitely does show that while there are some challenging moments in this life journey, the positives tend to outweigh many of the negatives. And Brian and I see that reflected again and again when we meet with families, when we meet with uh, brothers and sisters in different support groups that we run. We also wrote this research article, which looked at how uh, brothers and sisters feel about their sibling. We sent a survey to almost 5,000 families in different places in the United States, and we got a quite nice uh, response that many of them were older than 12 years of age, and then some were younger, and the majority were full biological siblings. Um, so that, that's the basis for this information. And with what we found in answer to the questions that we posed, that the majority of brothers and sisters do like their sibling with Down syndrome. Their majority are proud of their brother or sister with Down syndrome. 
Some certainly feel sorry for them or feel sad that their sibling had Down syndrome. And a small percentage, but an important percentage nonetheless, is that a certain percentage of siblings on the date that we asked the questions wish they could trade their sibling with Down syndrome for someone without Down syndrome. We oftentimes have an opportunity to do brothers and sisters workshops where Sue and I are together with siblings and we ask them to ask us the tough questions. And we get a lot of medical questions. How do they get that extra chromosome? Can Down syndrome be deadly? Is Down syndrome more common for boys? Why are some people with Down syndrome short? Are all kids with Down syndrome strong? And if there's one thing I've learned is never assume we know the answer or even understand what they're asking on the first question. This last question, I remember when I first got it, I immediately responded with a brilliant answer about hypotonia and about the muscle tone and how muscles evolve over time with people with Down syndrome. And then the puzzled sibling said, well, is that why they're throwing a temper tantrum and crying in the grocery store? And what we then started to realize, the sibling was not asking me, are all kids with Down syndrome strong? They were trying to ask, are all kids with Down syndrome stubborn, right? And that's a totally different response. Let's talk about embarrassment. Let's talk about how you deal with temper tantrums. Let's talk about brothers and sisters and the emotional journey, not the physical journey. So I've learned um, by working with brothers and sisters, when I get a question, I oftentimes will say, that's a really interesting question. Can you tell me more? And I'll delve for more specifics um, in order to be able to better answer those questions. So if there's one thing you take from this presentation, as your other children ask you questions about Down syndrome, rather than being quick to answer, be quick to ask for more information because oftentimes you'll get a more enriched perspective of where they're coming from. And that's important as well when you look at some of the educational questions that you might get things like this, why does my sibling have to do preschool twice? Do they have to go to a special school? What's the best way to educate someone with Down syndrome? Why is it called Down syndrome? So uh, many of our siblings wonder if they're going to have the, their sibling with Down syndrome is going to have the same experience that they are in school, if they're going to have the same opportunities. And even from a young age, they may worry about things like that last question. Can people with Down syndrome graduate from college? Are they going to have the opportunity for higher education? Or what are they going to be able to learn in their lifetime? And what we found is, Brian and I have found that siblings often feel badly if their brother or sister is not going to be able to accomplish some of the same things that they are going to be able to accomplish. And what we encourage parents to think about is, that everybody's life is valuable and everybody's career path is valuable. And even some of the simpler jobs that may not require going to college or require having clear speech or, or require us to be fully uh, engaged in all aspects of the community, that there are value, there's value in any job that some of people um, can do with Down syndrome. And that educate, there's all kinds of ways to educate individuals with Down syndrome as well. And one size does not fit all. Some students may flourish in an included classroom with their peers without Down syndrome, while other students may require much more support in the educational setting. So helping your children see all the possibilities and view any possibility as positive one is important. We oftentimes get social questions. Can people with Down syndrome have normal jobs? What does normal mean, right? How come they talk different than us? Does Down syndrome affect the way my brother's life is? Will she be ugly, right? There are some questions that pack such an emotional punch on us as adults. And there is a temptation if your other child were to ask this question, will she be ugly, to quickly correct. Ugly? What do you mean by ugly? She's not ugly. We're all people with Down syndrome are beautiful. We love people with Down syndrome, et cetera, et cetera. Sue and I have learned that to ask a question of parents oftentimes takes a lot of courage. And sometimes a brother or sister might be thinking about those questions for quite some time before they have the courage to share. And so if they get this, oh, you asked the wrong question, then they might retreat and be less likely to come forward with another question. So just remember, every question is really a gift, and it's a matter of unpackaging it and figuring out where does that truth nestle. So if we were to instead 
get this question and say, interesting question, can you tell mom a little bit more what you mean by ugly? You might get the response, I heard them call her ugly on the playground yesterday. Ah. Oh. So now it's a beautiful opportunity to have an honest conversation about teasing and nagging. And perhaps your loved one was using a vocabulary word that they heard others using. But also it could just simply be because that the youth growing up might not ascribe the same value and might not have the vocabulary that we hone as adults. So in our responses to this question that might be painful for us to hear as adults, it's such a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to unpackage so many different elements that might be going on under the surface. We do know too that brothers and sisters of a child with Down syndrome are much like the rest of us. And in our growing up experiences with siblings, we have a range of feelings and all those feelings are valuable and all those feelings are normal. And so you may not like some of the things that your uh, child without Down syndrome might say or question. But again, as Brian says, what's the real issue? What, what more do, are they asking us? What other information do they really need to have? Questions like this, does your brother throw big fits in public? Why is my brother obsessed with TV movies? How come he loves our new toys, but not his? <laughs> I hate it when my sister copies me, what should I do? Uh, these are all real uh, questions that we've heard and real conversations. So for example, this one, we do know that people with Down syndrome learn a lot by watching others and by imitating what others are doing, not in a, in a way to be annoying, but in a way to learn. So sometimes what we have to do with a question like this is really explain what's behind it and why if they can be such good educators for their brother or sister with Down syndrome, that they can teach them many, many things. And yes, sometimes they may not want to be the educator and they may not want to be involved, but at other times they certainly can appreciate and feel very proud of the role that they can play with their sibling. So it's, again, it's important to be a good, listen, a good listener. There are difficult moments in any life journey, and certainly by having a sibling with Down syndrome, those are going to happen as well. I think it's important to acknowledge that these are normal, and when they are normal, our reactions to them oftentimes just need to be validated so that we don't feel guilty for that. But sometimes we do notice people staring at our siblings in public. Is it intentional? Is it non-intentional? How do I make my sister um, stop listening to baby music when she's 13? I'm his little sister and I feel bad that I read much faster than him. What should I do? And how do you deal with people who use stinging vocabulary words like the word retard? I think overall with these difficult moments, it's important to pause and recognize that your younger ones uh, without Down syndrome will be experiencing these negative moments, validate those emotions, but oftentimes you don't need to solve all of them in the moment. Sometimes brothers and sisters just want their affirmation from parents, boy, I bet you're embarrassed. Boy, that was a difficult moment. Let them feel that so they don't feel bad feeling that. They oftentimes don't need your quick solutions because they just need to experience that. And oftentimes it's the next day or 48 hours later when they start to open up and you can have those rich conversations in those moments. We wanted to leave you with the top advice that your sons and daughters without Down syndrome have for you as parents. And Sue and I want to share with you one of the top things is be open and honest. Explain Down syndrome as early as possible. Use Down syndrome in your conversation, share information, with your siblings, they recognize that they're going to play an important role and they wanna make sure that things are not hidden and they do know when things are hidden. So please do continue to be open and honest in your dialogues at home. And I think parents are concerned often that Down syndrome is a negative connotation and sharing that with younger siblings uh, may have them be afraid or scared or not like their brother or sister. But especially when children are young, they have no idea what Down syndrome means. So you can be the ones to explain what Down syndrome is and you can be the ones to frame it positively so that they feel proud and they also feel like they have more knowledge. 
The next one is critically important as well, and, and that is to allow brothers and sisters to express negative feelings as well as positive feelings. You may not like it when your other children say, I'm so embarrassed, or I hate it when he does this, or he's so frustrating. Um, but the truth is, that's how they're feeling in the moment, and you're acknowledging that feeling provides support to the child without Down syndrome and can also then help them know that they can come to you to talk about things. And in, in the end of the, at the end of the day, as parents, we all want our children to be able to come to us so that we can help them with difficult moments and difficult questions. And on that theme, recognize that there are difficult moments and validating those and not taking those away from brothers and sisters, incredibly important. And we also uh, wanted to deliver the message, please limit caregiving responsibilities. They're happy to help out, but they don't want to be the go-to. But sometimes we also need you to remind us we need to be siblings and not third parents. And you know what I'm talking about. We siblings sometimes turn into those extra caregivers. And when what was really needed is we need to continue to be the brothers and sisters that we are. Recognize the individuality and uniqueness of each child in your family and praise each of them for their own abilities and accomplishments. It doesn't, life does not have to completely revolve around the individual with Down syndrome or the, uh, the star of the family who's talented educationally or uh, athletically. We want to be able to value each child for who they are and celebrate the uniqueness and beauty of each individual. Be fair. Um, make sure that your loved ones with Down syndrome are doing chores just like everyone else. Make sure that they're contributing to the family. But sometimes you do need to explain to their siblings that your assignments and your chores are matched based on developmental skills and not on chronological skills. But also siblings also want to point out to parents, our loved ones with Down syndrome sometimes play the Down syndrome card, which means they try to get away with things on purpose because they know they have Down syndrome and they're capable of so much more. And sometimes it takes a brother and sister to open up the eyes of parents that they're being duped by their own loved ones with Down syndrome. So don't always discount what siblings say to you. You may wanna sit back and think about whether there's truth in that. Another thing that Brian and I are very strong proponents of is taking advantage of supports for siblings. There are sibling things out there. There are many sibling groups uh, in different countries. There are opportunities for siblings to share. There are sites on Facebook. There are other types of things. If there is something in your community, whether it's for all people with disabilities and their siblings, or just uh, specifically related to Down syndrome, take advantage of support because you know that support for yourselves as parents is incredibly valuable to you. And the same holds true for siblings. They may not know it, but they can. We, we've seldom had a child come to a sibling workshop who was sorry they came at the end of the day. So if there's something out there, um, take advantage and certainly for yourselves. And if you are part of this World Down Syndrome organization movement uh, and this conference, then you are obviously getting some support for yourself. But it's critically important to be part of the community and to find out information to help ease the journey for all of us. To make it easier for you and your family, Sue and I have put all of the lessons that we have learned into this book that we've written, Fasten Your Seatbelt. It is a question and answer book for brothers and sisters of all ages that we hope that they could grow up with. We hope that you'll consider giving it to all of your uh, sons and daughters without Down syndrome. It's available through woodbinehouse.com in English, Japanese, and Portuguese. We also have a YouTube channel that you might be interested in finding uh, that answers some of the most critical questions that brothers and sisters ask. So you can take a look there as well. Sue and I have also been doing these brothers and sisters workshops and we've combined all of our knowledge, all of our activities in ready to go lessons on this website. So if you are a leader of a Down syndrome organization or if you are a sibling who wants to have that leadership in helping other brothers and sisters. We have all the materials available for you ready to go at our website, siblingslearnaboutdownsyndrome.com, where you could find all of our lesson plans in easy, ready-to-go sessions. And do let us know how it's going. 
We have so many people to thank for making this journey a fulfilling one for Sue and I, and certainly the fun folks who have funded our own research. And we hope that you will stay in touch. We are a global community and it's together that we learn. Thank you so much for spending time with us this evening. Thank you.